going on, y'all? It's your boy J.H. Gibbons here. And I'm Will C. And welcome to another episode of your Chromas Podcast, episode 88. We thank you for joining us, whatever day of the week it is. I know it's a great week for you, and because it is because you are listening. So that means you might be listening on Google Podcasts, Shopify, or Shopify, Spotify. There's so many different FIs these days. But yes. if you're listening on one of those FIs, I'm sure it is Spotify. Uh, it also might be Apple Podcasts or wherever you hear your podcast. If you are able to see our faces today, it means one thing and one thing only. It means you're on YouTube. So before you do anything else, here's what I need you to do. I need you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. So the next time that you hop on YouTube and you're scrolling down your feed, your Chromas podcast, most likely episode 88, will be on the top of your feed. And most of all, it is free to do so. Unbelievable. Uh, we stress this each and every single week. It's free to do so, but we're going to try to emphasize it a little bit, a little bit more this week, and ask you to please do so. Uh, not just because it's free, but because it will help us be able to reach more folks just like you. And if you enjoy the content of this episode, and if you've seen one previously, then you know what you're in for. Uh, and again, welcome to those who are new. But it's free to subscribe as well. Uh, like is not going to charge you or anything. You're just helping us to move further along with, uh, you know, what we want to get out to the world. And that's sharing gems for like-minded individuals who believe in self-development and growth and the betterment of you. So please do so, guys, because we've been stressing this for so long. For those who are new, for, for Jay, and I've been trying to convince him like every week. And I need your help to, to prove to him that this is something that is a movement that's happening. So please help me, guys. Don't make me a fool. <laughs> he is absolutely right. Uh, we do need your help. We need we need to see it. We need to, to feel that love that we need to feel that energy that we're providing you as well. Uh, it's been, you know, I mean, 88 weeks straight. Um, I can't believe I'm even saying that number. I mean, it's a it's a huge milestone. But these things don't mean anything if you don't take action. If you're not listening, if you're not implementing what we're giving you all the gems everybody we have on if you're not taking what we are giving you or what they are saying and putting it into your life then it is meaningless for you to be a part of this community because we're always about growth we're always about stretching past our limitations going much further than you thought you possibly could and then achieving the wildest of dreams that you have so you just got to continue pushing continue subscribing, continue sharing, continue being a part of the community. And I promise you, as you grow, we grow, everybody else around you grow. So just keep watching, keep subscribing, keep being a part of our community and we'll continue to grow. What a week it has been. We'll see last week on episode 87 of the Acromas podcast, we talked about exercise being a way of life. And I got to say, man, I went to the gym, you know, you know I'm, I'm a huge gym rat. I've been going to the gym uh, for years now, but more specifically, I sort of changed up my style of lifting. I changed up my rev my regimen. I changed up the amount of weight I used to lift, um, only because I am also doing other sports at the same time, doing flag football. And uh, this year was a special year for me. Last year wasn't that great of a year for me. Um, the injury that I sustained on my leg back during the height of COVID, it it, uh, it affected me mentally more than physically because I'm always, and, and, and guys out there, any athlete who's out there, we'll see, I'm sure you know too, whenever you get an injury somewhere, especially on your lower body, you, you tend to favor it a little bit. You tend to be a little bit more gentle on it. And eventually, you know, however you are walking or however you're approaching the healing process of that injury, you, you stay like that. So um, I, I've noticed that when I was playing, I was a bit more cautious I didn't play with as much enthusiasm as I did. I wasn't all there because I was always focused on, man, what if I just, it, my knee buckles, I re-injure it, I, I tear something again. How long is the, the rehab process going to be? Uh, you know, how painful is it going to be? What am I going to have to go through? And um, I, I would say that this week, keeping that in mind, I've been able to, I've been able to get back on the field. I feel great. The knee is holding up. I feel in great shape, probably the best shape I've been in the past maybe five years in terms of my cardio, my ability to move, my agility. So I'm, I'm really thankful that I was able to make exercise a part of my life, not just this week, for, but for the past year and a half. Uh, it's, it's been great. We'll see. Uh, that's phenomenal to hear. Uh, for those who, have, who haven't been privy to, to know your story, uh, you, you've been through a, a lot in recent time and a lot of physical um, 
adversities that you've had to overcome. So the fact that you're able to get back out there um, and to not to not give up on your passion and to what, what you love to do and um, to apply effort into yourself and, and, and recognizing that you needed to give you that time to, to excel and to be ready uh, more than anything is just it's just awesome to hear. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, we're always concerned about making sure you're okay, um, <laughs> first and foremost. Uh, but but it's, um, it's inspiring, it's motivational to see you uh, be so driven with it. And for those who haven't had a chance to to see the see the journey and progression for, for Jay, uh, you know, you want to go check out the Acromis Fitness um, at the Acromis Fitness on IG uh, so that you can get an insight to see see the progression you can you can literally go back and you can see the progress that has been made on a consistent basis um it falls in line with our 213 method of uh, committing to yourself and just applying that logic and uh to be quite honest i can recall back a few months back uh where you know jay kind of really committed to that that thought process and just was applying it and is showing uh you know full center right today uh with him being willing to commit to himself and to commit to make that time to carve it out somehow some mm. way like we all get busy on mm -hmm. a day-to-day -day basis and to be able to make that time and to be um diligent about it is commendable uh so i think that goes without saying you know shout out to you for that effort and to everyone out there who's been committed to yourself to mm. give you a bit of time back each day so just wanted to give you know credit where it's due man much appreciated man and and i mean commitment that is a strong word and sometimes I think you have to be almost obsessed to do things at a very high level um, in order to, to stay committed. It has to, it has to almost be part of your life. It has to be something that not only you've been doing for so long, but you've been so great at doing it that it now comes naturally. You can pass on the knowledge that you've been able to build over the years um, onto the youth or onto, uh, you know, someone who you're mentoring or, you know, a younger brother or son, whomever. Um, I think I think staying committed to something and showing the amount of passion that you have for something that you're great at can only inspire others. And uh, today we are, are glad to have back a guest that we had on in the past. And uh, you want to talk about commitment. You want to talk about obsession to craft and attention to detail uh, with everything that he's done uh, in his lifetime. I mean, you look no further than our next guest. And uh, we're glad to have him on once again. Uh, he is the host and the owner of WRNG FM Power Jams Hot Radio, none other than DJ Bob the Wiz. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Uh, there we you go. all hear me? We got you. Yep. Yes, sir. Perfect. Good afternoon, my brothers. A beautiful Sunday to you both. How you doing, man? How's it been? <laughs> It's been amazing. I, you know, I, I always, I always say about life, it's, you know, there's so many different mini adventures within a day. There's so many things that happen. There's so many ups and downs, so many learning lessons you can have throughout the day. And, you know, I, I was telling, uh, we'll see less last time, I think before we even recorded the podcast that, um, I would complain, but nobody would care. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that usually the case. That's usually the case, right? Absolutely. Or maybe they hear the one listen, you know, they, they, they're hearing you, but it tuned you out. That's exactly usually, right. That's, that's usually what happens, right? It's yeah, just so I'm so over the moon. I'm so uh, overly looking forward to this podcast here today, this beautiful Sunday afternoon, man. I'm just killing. But I'm glad to have this conversation with you, gentlemen. It's been a while, like you said. Yep. A lot has changed and a lot has transpired with me since the last time we uh, we had our little meeting here on uh, Acroma's Park. Absolutely, and I, we're looking forward to hearing it on this episode. You know, I know the last time we were talking about WR and GFM Power Jams Hot Radio, and um, I, I wanted to see if there was an update with the radio station and how things are going on your end. Well, I'm glad you asked, because I have taken a hiatus from WRNJFM for Jam Radio until May 2023. Okay. And uh, yeah, I had to. Uh, it, it, got, it got to the point where I 
found it difficult to get out of bed on a daily basis. And that I attribute that to exhaustion because, you know, I had, as you know, I had some other people working with me at the station from different locations, but two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, I'm up loading up, trying to put programs together that I am responsible for myself. And uh, it, got, it, it got to the point where during the daytime, I couldn't get out of bed. You know, so I said, look, I got to take a break from WRNG or I can kill myself. So I, I called the other folks associated or affiliated with the station. And I told them what my intentions uh, were. Now, before I shut down, I did a farewell program that is still running on WRNG. And it's going to run until next year, May. It's one program, it's a farewell program. So you want to listen to our final program for that particular evening, you can go into the WRMG FM Power Jam Chat Radio because I'm still making my monthly contribution to the station of $67. So that's keeping all of my music, my drops and everything on within the station. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to reassemble all of that when I come back on, you know. But I needed a break. Plus, I'm dealing with, as you know, I've been dealing with a little bit of a, a health issue. Also, I think it was an it was a it was a it was time for me to take a vacation, man. And I, as you know, I just came back from the Bahamas. Right. I enjoyed that immensely. Mm. Enjoyed that uh, ten days off, man. And, there you go. You know, I, I'm ready to take another trip. To be honest yeah. with you, you know. <laughs> that's a beautiful choice, Bahamas. Hey, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Well, this was my fourth trip to Bahamas. Uh, the last three times I flew. This time I went on a cruise mm. and uh, visited a couple of other islands within the Bahamas, Half Moon Cay and uh, Freeport and then Nassau. Mm. It was nice, man. Hey, look, I was partying every night in the club here on the, <laughs> on the cruise. <laughs> and they, had a, they had a DJ that was jamming every night, man. And I, I had to hang out in that club, you know. I believe uh, that. Yeah, I had to I had to drag myself up. You know, <laughs> my girlfriend woke my lady woke me up and said, You're not getting up to go to the club. I said, Why you didn't wake me up before now? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I had to show up with my clothes and we were done day, man, and we party. It's 1999, you know. Yeah. So hey, look, life is not promise. So gentlemen, you got to enjoy life while you're still here. Mm. Last mm. Since, since, since I've been on with you on the podcast, I've lost about three or four friends, you know, mm -hmm. different COVID, uh, heart attack, and other health issues took them out. So I, I surprised myself this morning. I got up about seven o'clock and I went to walk like two miles, you know. Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a um, membership with a certain G fitness, what's it called? Something fitness. Is it plant uh, fitness? Again, Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness. Wow. I got a membership. I go there three days a week once I don't have doctor's appointments. So, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I go down there and I, you know, go on the stair climber or I do the, 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 the treadmill, the bike. So, I'm trying to stay fit, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep up with it. Yeah. Wow. And I, I you know, I think it's such a, an interesting contrast from the last time I know we spoke and you were so, so deep into the radio station because it was an obsession. Music is your passion, making music, mixing it. It's, it's what you do. So uh, to be able to, to kind of push that aside and understand that your health does come first and then, you know, you actually have fun and you, you remove yourself completely from what you were doing in order to, to see the other side of yourself, to have that, that fun time that you used to have to be able to get out and not necessarily necessarily worry about those obligations. And I think in this big rat race that we're all in, when we get obsessed with something, we we struggle to remove ourselves from it. And even though, you know, it's it's uh, people always talking about just grinding and hustling and going, many people are talking about, they're not talking about that resting that you need to do in between. They're not talking about giving your body time to heal and and really grow and adapt as you continue to to work a lot harder so i think for anybody who's watching the podcast whether you're an entrepreneur or you're working for somebody else or 
whatever you're doing, I think it's important that you understand that your health comes first over mm -hmm. everything. And you let me say, always, go yeah, ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to yeah. say, you must always listen to your body, listen to your mind. Um, it'll tell you first before you're willing to listen, you know, it'll, it'll shut down on you. And then you're like, all right, well, I have to listen to what my body's saying now. So that must've been an incredible transition uh, from behind the table over to the table in a cruise, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you, WRMG was an obsession and an addiction mm. for me. I don't want to see myself laying in a casket, mm. much less you. Not right now. I mean, I'm 72, soon to be 73. I'm still mm. having the, enjoying the best of my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not ready to shut it down. Whether intentionally or accidentally, mm -hmm. you know. But what you said earlier, all of the above was true. I worship this stage. I got up, like you said, music is my life. But you know what? I played music in the police band back in Guyana. So music is my life. I worked at a radio station in Maryland, actually in D.C., W-O-O-K, back in the 70s. So music has always been part of me. Like I eat, sleep, and digest music. But yeah, you're right. It came to a point where I had to make a choice, me or WRNG. And that was an easy choice for me to make. Mm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, 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 I informed all of the other people that are members of the station, DJs, that we can hit it up again in May of next year. So let them get to do other things also, you know. So I get to do other things. They get to do other things. And so then we can come back fresh with some fresh ideas, bring back some of the old programs. Of course, the Acromus podcast is going to retain their slack from 11 to 12 on Mondays. Much appreciated. You know, so, yeah. yeah. So we, we um, hey, look, those props are causing me a lot of money to make. So <laughs> 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 One of the reasons why I keep y'all the same slot, because if I change, I got to change the time. Y'all going to come on again today. So I say, hey, it's cheaper to keep it, right? Yeah. As you know, yeah. I say, hey, look, cheaper to keep it that way. So I said, I'm going to stick with the same hours, 11 to 12 on a Monday. And most of the shows, I got some new shows that I'm creating. I'm going to have to make drops for those shows. But I'll tell you, man, I, I'm enjoying this moment. Here it is. I, I'm not up at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. It was taking its toll on me. And I uh, I couldn't continue you know, going down that road. Just couldn't. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to ask a question um, sure. for those out there um, who are, I guess, in that point where they're not necessarily listening to their to their body or more so their mind, mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're running and gunning on fumes. Uh, what's a good indication or what are some key pointers to kind of let them know, okay, maybe it's time to slow down a bit and just kind of reassess where you are? Um, to kind of figure out if a break is needed for you, or uh, you know, if you may need to consider some alternatives uh, on you know on your road, because what I think you said, which was really awesome, is the fact of you you were able to to map out a, a time frame when you you feel as though you've given yourself and a good amount of time to see where you, and assess where you'll be by next May and how you'll feel, and um, you're taking action on actually allowing yourself to live a little and, and to joy, enjoy being you, right? Another part of yourself that you kind of haven't been privy to with so much grinding and so much like focus on that part of your passion. So what advice would you would you give or a few tips that you could share to kind of be key, key indications and pointers for those who may be in that process now and, and having issues coming to terms with accepting that? I would say listen to your body. As your body talks to you. Mm -hmm. When you can't get up, right? When you can't even go and get up and go and take a shower. Get, oh, I'm gonna get up and take a shower. And you keep repeating it to yourself, but you're not getting up. Mm -hmm. But when it get when it comes, your body talks to you. I'm being honest with you, we'll see. I didn't listen to my body. I kept pushing myself because I thought it was Superman. You know, I, I kept going like like the uh, like the bunny. Mm -hmm. I kept going and energize a bunny. So I, I said, my lady said, look, Bob, you can't keep doing this. You can kill yourself. 
And I said, hey, I'll give it another week or another month and see what happens. Hey, you know what? I shut it down that weekend because I just, my body, your body talks your will and listen to your body, man. For those who are out there trying to be Superman and Spider-Man and all that, be a hero, don't do it. And I'm gonna tell you why, because you don't want to see yourself or your fantasy in a casket because your body gonna give out. You're gonna either have a major heart attack, a stroke. You know, right now, just to piggyback on what, I, what you said, I got a good friend of mine that used to DJ with me at several clubs. I toured the crossroads to name a few. We DJ together. We alternate on Friday, Saturday nights. Somebody found him in his car. He had a stroke. Sit down just like that. Wouldn't move. He is, they, they, they don't give him until January of next year, February of next year. And it's a young brother. The brother is younger than me. You know, he's in his 50s, I think. Wow. But he 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 worked. He, he I mean, he just kept going and going. Parties he kept playing for and all this kind of stuff. And it caught up with him. Mm-hmm. You know, he told his lady going to the store to pick up something and never came back. And she went out to the store where she knew that, knew that he was going. There he was sitting in the car, passed out. A stroke. Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm telling you, right now, he can't speak can only move, move his part of his upper extremities, you know, not all of it. So listen to your body, man, I tell you, you know what I mean? That's 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 my advice to people who want to push this, themselves to the limit and beyond. Listen to your body, because your body tells you. You know, I was a fool, and I, I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I was a fool to not listen to my body earlier, even though I was feeling burnt out. Even although I was feeling drained, like I've been in a fight with Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier at the same time, you know. So I I had to take a, a step back, look at where I was going in life, what I wanted to continue doing, and tell look, enough is enough. Guess what? WRNG is still going to be there when I'm gone. So I had to make a decision right now and say, look, this is it. I'm shutting down. Call the other folks and let them know. This weekend, I'm shutting down. If y'all got any uh, comments to make on your final programs for this period, go ahead and do so, because I'm shutting down. Mm-hmm. But listen to your body. Listen to your body. It's not going to lie to you. All right? If you can't get up to go to work, if you can't get, <laughs> tell it, if you can't get up to go to work, if you can't get up to go to take a shower, you keep saying, hey, give me five more minutes, I'll get up. Your body is shut down. Mm-hmm. That's what happened. You know, mm-hmm. I, you realize it, but you're just this macho thing, you know, yeah, I could get up and do it. I'm gonna get up and do it. Mm-hmm. Then I could go. I did that, and I was like I said, I love. I was a chump for doing that, mm-hmm. and uh, I've learned. Mm-hmm. I commend commend you for for uh, putting yourself first in that way. And uh, I think we all are familiar with the old saying: if you're not, you know, okay for yourself, you can't be okay for anyone. Um, I agree so with it. It's really something to to take to take uh, a moment and reflect on. So we hope that everyone is listening can do that um, and, and just understand how important you are because there is no pause and do over in this life. So you we'll only get this as far as we are aware of. So that is true. Uh, take that care is true. of yourself, love yourself. And, and then I mean, you can't be selfish, right? Because you got mm-hmm. a family, mm-hmm. right? You got a lot of people that care about you. If you don't show no care for yourself, you think anybody gonna care about you? So you have to take that leap. Right, it's, it's mm. a gigantic leap, but sometimes you gotta, you know, rewind, pause, or stop, or whatever. I said, look, I'm gonna take a break here and now. You know, I could come back to this later if I take a break now. But if I don't take a break now, it's no coming back. Mm. Like you said, you can't put it on pause. You know, it's true. It's uh, yeah. it's just, it's not necessarily. I feel as though maybe and 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 Jay, maybe you can give some insight to this. But I feel mm. as though it may be a thing where. Um, maybe it's a matter of, of interpretation, right? Of how you how you how are you handling that? If you if you feel as though you're making such a grave sacrifice, I think it's really good to just kind of think back uh, to what DJ all the Wizards told us, just to, to like you know assess it for a moment. It's mm-hmm. it's it's for you. Like you want to be here long term and have longevity and just enjoy uh, enough of life as is intended, and to not lose sight of it. I feel like. I feel like a lot of the times, especially nowadays, we are in a point in time where it seems to be very common. Um, 
and you kind of get lost in the mix of it all. Uh, Jay, how, how do you feel about that? What, what are your thoughts on some of what we just discussed? Yeah, I mean, I think now you see, we see it everywhere, right? If we have social media, if you're aware of anything that's going on outside of, you know, your own circle, it's it, there is advertising and promotional uh, material out there on uh, about grinding, about pushing mm. as hard as you can, about mm. working 20 hours a day and sleeping four hours. And that's the way that you're going to build wealth. That's the way that you're going to find your escape. That's the way you're going to, you know, get the financial freedom that you're looking for. But they never talk about the other side. They don't talk about the rest. They don't talk about listening to your body and paying attention to your fit, your not just your physical health, but your mental health which yeah. is something that is definitely underrated today. And I think I think what's happening now, because people with a massive following, I'm talking about athletes or very famous celebrities, Hollywood stars, they're all coming out and expressing themselves in a way that was taboo before, in a way that they didn't want to before because they would get ridiculed, get pushed it aside, call weak. And though it still happens, I commend them for being brave enough to come out with their platform and say, hey, look, during these years, I was not right. During the years that you know I'm I'm living now, I had to take a pause. I had to, I had to leave the game that I love. I had to leave the performance that I love. I couldn't do tours anymore because I couldn't even stand up. Right. Yeah. I think I think we're all getting to a point now where we're starting to realize that we aren't superhuman, right? I mean, regardless of what we may see on on the social media or regardless of what we see in the media in general about the obsession with working and just being obsessed with what you do. It's just that other side that is very underrated or very, un, you know, people do not talk about it as much uh, just because I, I think it goes against the grain in terms of what a lot of these different influencers are trying to put across in their videos. Um, I mean, this goes for fitness mm -hmm. too. You know, you see people out there doing two or three workouts a day and bragging about it. And, you know, for them, for anybody who's watching, they may see their body and think, okay, I got to go to the gym three or four times a day to look like that. Not knowing that there's probably different things that the person has taken or just genetics that that person has that you may not, you may not have. Um, so there's certain things that I think people have to, they got to take a step back collectively. And, and anybody who's watching this would, would know that by now, just spend some time with yourself. You know, if you're watching this on a Sunday, just to sit and meditate in a room for a little while, spend a little time with yourself, spend a little time with your thoughts, rethink your lifestyle that you're living now. And then also think about the purpose that you have. Are you living for your purpose? Is, are you going to live to see your purpose fulfilled by the path that you're taking now? So I think, I think it is vital, as DJ Badu has said, that you must listen to your body and I know sometimes it's a little difficult because we feel as though we have to push more for those around us, but we have to be here for those around us too, right? We have to we have to be here for the long term for them because they depend on Deep. us as much as we depend on them. Deep. So it's it's I, I I agree wholeheartedly. We'll see. And DJ Bondowitz is, is absolutely vital um, to pay attention to your body. Let me call an individual who's no longer with us. God rest his soul, Michael Jackson. Mm. It is a young man who pushed and pushed and he pushed the envelope, mm. right? And then when he get him, he can't sleep or he couldn't sleep. So what he did, had his doctor give him propofol. I know how that is. I mean, in terms of, you know, they say you should get eight hours of rest at night. Mm. I don't even get to sleep. I got insomnia. Mm. I got, I got, I got to be using a CPAP machine mm. because I, I, I stopped breathing a couple of times. Wow. Uh, Recently, I didn't mention to you, but recently, as, as in three weeks, I stopped breathing for like minutes and I jumped up because I was between sleep and wake. I had just gone to bed like about 30 minutes prior. And the doctor told me before, do not sleep on your stomach because your tongue could be rot and lodge in your throat and suffocate you, right? So because I got that issue, I, I sleep either on either side or on my stomach. So I lay on my stomach. I didn't, I got a new CPAP machine. So I didn't have the CPAP machine as yet. I just got the CPAP machine last week. So, and I think that's the reason why they uh, accelerated or accelerated the, the purpose of me getting this new machine. They kind of speed it up. So accelerated. So I just have gone to sleep Jamal and, and Will like about 30 minutes. 
and I started going, <laughs> couldn't breathe. It's like somebody locked, put, arms, put a hand around my throat or like I had swallowed something and I went on the wrong side of the throat. But I stopped breathing and my lady got up and tapping me, what happens? And I said, I, I kind of put in my finger, my hands to my throat, you know, as though somebody's choking me. But I keep fighting to breathe. And I jumped up and I sat on the bed and still struggling to breathe. So at that time, I said a silent prayer to the Lord. I said, Lord, if this is the time you can take me out, go ahead. And when I finished saying that within myself, I started, but I started coughing, mm -hmm. right? I started coughing, 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 coughing before I started breathing. But I'll tell you what, it was a struggle. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend, but I, 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 I was scared. I'm not gonna lie to you because the second time or the third time something that happened, but it's the worst it has been since I experienced those other uh, two episodes. So I, I come back. The reason I come back to what we were talking about is if you don't get enough sleep, again, I, that's what I said, but I think what happened is because of used to be up all these nights, early mornings, mornings, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock, five o'clock, then go to bed at six or seven in the morning. I could sleep better during the day for some reason. So I think I can no longer right now sleep at nights because I've been up so many nights loading up the station, Recording program because sometimes I come out and I come on the uh, controller and I start in a recording a program that's going to air like after your program or after the news or something. So I do a two hour program, hmm. right? At two o'clock in the morning, you know. So the point I'm making is that get your sleep, get your rest because. That could be the detriment. That could that, that could be you know, telling you, that could be a way for you to depart this world when it is that you're not prepared to. Hmm. So again, and why why I mention MJ is because I know how it was for him when at night you can't sleep. And he's out during the daytime rehearsing uh, 12 hours a day, then going home and can't sleep. So yeah, you gotta listen to your body. And unfortunately he didn't listen to his, but mm -hmm. you gotta listen to your body. I'll come back to that again, but you gotta listen to your body. Wow. That that's powerful. Um yeah. for starters. Uh secondly, I'm I'm glad you're still here and, and God has still shown you favor um to this day as he continues to. Uh so amen to that. <coughs> um but you're absolutely right. Thirdly, with with MJ, I mean, he he had an obsession that only few would know. You know, uh, he, uh, you would have to be closer than his family was to him to know. You know, and yeah. Um, yeah. I think only the doctors knew how tough it was for him to unwind at the end of the yeah. day and shut off uh, mm -hmm. because his he was his own obsession. Um, yeah. the way he looked, the way he dressed, the way he performed. Very eccentric. Was moved very, very eccentric. And he, yeah. his attention to detail was, I mean, as fine as a grain of sand, right? If it was, well, that was his curse. Yeah. You know, that's very true. true. That's exactly yeah. true. Too. That was his curse. Yeah. Because, like you said, attention to detail. Yeah. I wanted to text something before I forget, Nathan. Sure. But I remember he and his brothers, they were, I don't think it was a studio, but they were somewhere and they were recording. Got to be big. no 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 maybe tomorrow a sound a sound that they put up on maybe tomorrow mm -hmm. that came out in the seventy uh, I don't know how many stars there are and his brothers pull a trick on him right because all of his brothers Jackie Tito Marlon mm -hmm. and so forth Jermaine he said they stopped the music like they stopped playing when he was singing he was backing them mm -hmm. and he said. Maybe tomorrow, tomorrow, maybe. And the brother said, oh, take it easy, man. Kai said, they said, they said, we just fooling around. We just playing the joke on him. He said, look, I think Michael was seven or eight at that time. He said, 
look, I take this business serious. And he was serious. He wasn't, he wasn't diving. Mm. He said, I take this business serious. There's no, no play around with this. You know, he told them. And they said, we're just trying to have some fun. Fun. He said, I have no fun here. This is business. Mm. And he, that's what I'm saying. So at that young age at seven, wow. it was still embedded in him. Like you said, to be a professional, to, 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 to make sure that you cross the T's and the I's kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that, like I said, was his curse because that's the way he was up to the time he died. Yeah. And he was a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was, I was going to say that I think you said it perfectly, that it was also his curse. Yeah. And if you look at some of the greatest humans who have ever lived, whether you're an entertainer like MJ or Elvis or you're a, you know, you're a professional athlete, Muhammad Ali, all of these people, though they have paved the way, they have also paid the sacrifice. Yeah. It's the sacrifice of obsession, of being obsessed yeah. with what you're doing, yeah. of, of paying, uh, you know, the utmost attention to your craft, to getting it absolutely perfect. But right. then you look at these guys, and you're like, well, these guys are the one of ones. They mm. are they are the legends, the once in a lifetime sort of professional athletes or entertainers, some that we'll never see again. Do you think there is a link between being somebody as great or as legendary as M as MJ and then um, having to live with that obsession? Do you think you have to be absolutely obsessed in order to be great? Hmm. Really, you gonna take that? Oh, I'm. Uh, this is just that's a that's a loaded question. <laughs> I I mean, for me, I uh, it, it's tough because that in an essence to to that end of the scope that does decide the decide the term of using a sacrifice as a way of explaining it because a lot of them didn't really live outside of the scope of what they're known for right mm -hmm. like if you have a trivia as to what's their favorite hobbies outside of that what could you really really say unless you're like someone that was die hard of like need to know everything about this person but um it just it i guess to give another example of it would be uh kobe right mm -hmm. i think it's a prime example of this uh scenario where uh, you know, he dedicated himself to his craft and uh, unfortunately had an untimely, you know, passing. Um, it, it just, it was a, a moment I feel as though in recent history, recent time that I felt like everyone could resonate with and it just kind of hit different. Um, you, respected, you respected the man and his work, but just took a moment to separate the person from their craft and just kind of realize how short life is. And um, uh, how bleak of an eye it goes. Um, so I guess when you say great, it does to me apply how far, how how much are you willing to to lose and to to sacrifice mm -hmm. yourself to attain that level of um, legacy and infamy for for you know the rest of time, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, I I I I I question I question that with is it possible to find a balance where you can have both both right is it possible that you can sustain that level of success and commitment for example another good example as just mm -hmm. came to me is uh tom brady mm -hmm. um, where we see right now he's going through in his personal life some um turmoil as it relates to the level of commitment and sacrifice he's made to his mm -hmm. passion so as human beings, how how can we find the balance for it? Because I feel like that's the ingredient that we would need to 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 be sustained to to live a a, a healthy life, right? Because your obsession your um, obsession is not necessarily healthy all the time, as we know from our conversation uh, for for each of us and and what we've experienced and 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 Jay, you can attest to this. Uh, I was one of those people that was working out two, three times a day mm -hmm. uh, through my development. And even when I got into peak condition, mm -hmm. I, you know, I haven't really said anything about it, but I had a lot of health ailments afterwards and had to go to the hospital and I'm still dealing with some complications now. 
where I can't push as hard as I was pushing before because I pushed too hard. Mm-hmm. So now my, my body was let, as you said, my body was letting me know. Oh, and, yeah. and, 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 and <laughs> I asked some questions for some folks who reached out to me like, Hey, you know, what's going on with work? I'm like, look, I work out, but right now I'm in recovery. I'm in the process of rehabilitating my body and I have to do it differently because mm-hmm. as you, as you both clearly state, I want to be around and I, I can't be 35 and in the best shape of my life. And and, and then I'm gone tomorrow. My, my, I have loved ones that care about me and I care about myself and I have so much more to get to, to life and to, to everyone. So um, uh, th- this is such a deep topic and I feel like it hits home for each one of us. Yeah. So your question, that's why I said your question was a very loaded one because it, it just sends it to even, even more depth in my perspective, but please let, please, I want to know what you both, how you feel what you think well i i wanted to i want to, I want to jump in because specifically the tom brady issue i was watching a week ago today last sunday and his wife made an appearance on one of the channels and she was saying i did my part you told me you was going to retire it was referencing tom you told me you know that you were going to retire you got a family you got family I moved to Ohio or wherever they were supposed to be moving to. And I gave up everything, even with the family. We gave up vacations, Thanksgiving, Christmas, blah, 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 birthdays. And she said, I told Tom, after he told me he was going to retire, that we're going to move from where we were living. I think they were out there in Massachusetts. And, they, and she made a move. And now he went back on his word a month later to play football again. And this is what I'm talking about, your obsession. And you got to know when your body say, hey, it's time to, I'm telling you, time to take a rap. Look, for those people I mentioned earlier, I mean, for the person, Michael Jackson, that I mentioned earlier, I could also include a couple other people in that group. You mentioned Kobe Bryant, Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier, Kenny Norton. Those guys are gone too soon. Mm. Right? They didn't live to be 75, 78, 80, and all that stuff. MJ went early. So did uh, Muhammad Ali when he's of late 60s or whatever the case may be. Huh? Kenny Norton at a young age, Joe Frazier, the guys, because mm. they were obsessed with boxing. That's true. They didn't know when to walk away from the sport. Mm. And because of that health issues, again, you know, got beat up so many times in the head. And, I mean, that's what slowed on Muhammad Ali. The, the blow, he played in the rope of dope, taking all the blows in the head, and that ended up taking him to the grave because of the illness that he had. Mm-hmm. So the point I'm making is you got to listen, regardless of what profession you're in, you got to listen to your body, man, because you only got that one body. And when the body shut down, and I can tell you something, and why I'm saying that is because my sister, God rest her soul, she didn't know when to slow down, Jeanette Gibbons. And it caused her her life because she had several properties. She worked in doubles. She got to run to the store to buy different things for the houses that she, she, you know, that she was renting. And then come back two o'clock to go to work for three thirty, and then work a double that particular night. Because when she came home that night late, she worked a double and then stayed up. To watch the final four college football basketball. So the point I'm making is that she didn't know when to slow down. She didn't know when to, oh God, let me listen to my body. Mm-hmm. And because she didn't, it took her out to here with a massive heart attack. Wow. I'm telling you, you've got to listen to your body because it talks to you. Mm-hmm. You can't get up when you can't do it. Your daughter may come and knock on your door. Daddy, are you taking me to, to the movies? You know, she might be eight, nine, ten years old. You can't get up because you're so worn down. You're so tired. And let your mommy take you. Daddy, tired. You got to. And I, look, I said it, and I meant it. I need to recalibrate. Mm. I really did. I needed to recalibrate. I needed to sit back, kick my feet up, enjoy my life for a year, and that's why I shut down the station when I did. Because I felt that if I kept going, I would not have lasted this year. That's how serious it was, you know. So I'm glad that I shut down. 
And I'm going to tell any, every any, and everybody that's listening, that's on your podcast, listen to your body. Mm-hmm. Don't put yourself, you're not Superman. That's only fiction. But you've got to listen to your body because that's true life and death situation. You know what I mean? So what Jamal, the, the loaded question you said he put out there, I'm going to tell you because, like I said before, I had another friend that used to be there with me. What do you say? What was his name? DJ name? Oh man, I can't remember. But he, I one week I was out from the club and he was on the next week. And then I went back the next week and I said, What happened to so so so? Those guys say he died on Wednesday. Mm. As if I had a tag. Uh, he's another one to play out all the time. And yet I was shocked that him of all people, I thought he was a workout, like a workaholic. I mean, at the gym and all that kind of stuff, you know fitness and all that, watch what he, you know. But like I said, when it's your time, you gotta let your body, you know. So yeah. I'm glad we're having this conversation on this topic because for me, I've been talking about a radio station. I love it. It's my life. But I also gotta know, you know, like 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 Kenny Rogers say, and he was making reference to a different kind of a an individual. You gotta know when to hold them, you gotta know when to hold them. Mm-hmm. I I really have to know when to hold it and then when to hold it and let it go, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm here to testify to that fact. So my advice to people that are addicted to what they do or obsessed with what they do, hey, take a break, look in the mirror, talk to yourself and say, look, I can't do this no more. I can't. I can't push myself to the limits no more. You know what I mean? Because, and I come back to something with Tom Brady, he's very he's, he's very selfish because you got a family for Christ's sake. You, you promise your family that you're gonna stop playing last year and you're gonna do things with them. And this is, this is the part I talk about being selfish, even with me, you know, because I, I got a family, I got you, I got Lisa, my grandkids, I got friends. They came to the family and said, look, I'm not gonna be selfish with this. I'm gonna take a break. Because I got people that love me and people that I love. You know what I mean? So you got to take a break because guess what? If your family see, or in this case, his wife see, that he's not showing her the love and affection and all that kind of stuff, you put it for a first, she can get it from somebody else. Mm. You know what I mean? She's going to move on. And he's going to be he's gonna be left up in air because he preferred to put football. And he had a bad attitude. I look at my, uh, his game on Sunday. And there was a guy, I think he was one of the, the, the um, probably a guard or one of those guys. But the guy missed a tackle. And my man, I mean, Tom Brady, ate my man alive and spit him out. You know, and you're going to do this to me, man. I don't public TV. Not, no, you know you're not going to do it to me. I can tell you what hole your mother came from. I can tell you what hole you came out of. You know what I mean? So if he <laughs> if he wants to embarrass me on, on the football field in front of everybody because he's arrogant, brother, it's not gonna end well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, uh, them tell you, you know, like Miss Gibbons used to say, <laughs> <laughs> my mother got rest her soul. She had all these little accolades that she used to put out there. You know, you better go fight some ducks. You know, we're right with ducks. And he better go fight some ducks. Because he can't keep treating those people like that, man. I'm serious. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there, there are a lot of there are a lot of superlatives and adjectives I can I can give to Tom Brady. Some on the on that good side, and some on the bad side. But I think it it goes back to that word obsession, right? Like if yeah, if you yeah. want to be the goat, if you want to be known as the greatest, sometimes you you will have to be selfish. And um, I, I would say for a lot of those players who are in the Hall of Fame. Um, and even even some of those who aren't and have played for a very long time, they only a few know the damage that they've done to their families from the sacrifices they made, kind of putting them second and putting sports or their profession first. Um, and I, I know I know a friend personally, um, and I've seen it through through us being friends for a very long time. I could see that there was something lacking earlier on in mm-hmm. life and knowing that you know the father was a professional athlete I was like okay mm-hmm. there there's something there's something missing there there was there's a piece of you missing there a longing mm-hmm. to to want to feel whole or feel 
like you belong somewhere. And I think that goes for a lot of different, whether, whether you are playing professional sports, you're an entertainer, you always see such a massive strain in the relationship between the kids and that parent. Um, um, so that is, that is one thing I think that comes with the territory of being obsessed. And then to the point where you are not aware or you're aware and you're just choosing to still follow your obsession rather than listening to your body or your family or those who love you. It is, I, I do agree. It is a very selfish thing. Uh, but from what we've seen from all the ones who have been called the goats or the greatest of all time, I would say that a lot of them have that same backstory. A lot of the, the children of those, uh, those entertainers or those athletes or uh, those people who are so obsessed with their profession, it's the same. Well, you know, I look, I know he was supporting the family, but he wasn't there. Wasn't there for my dance recital. Wasn't there for, uh, you know, my poetry slam. Wasn't there to watch my high school sport. graduation. The high yeah. school graduation. They remember all of that. <laughs> they remember all of it. Even even starting in middle or elementary school when they're very yeah. young, they still remember because yeah. they, they that they keep that emotional tied an emotional knot that they have to that particular event with them for their entire life and sometimes it can make or break their entire life so mm. i think for those out there who are maximum performers or maximum effort people who just can't let go you need to because there are other people in your life now who are also depending on you and if yeah. you're not here if you're not there for them there is never going to be a time where you can be you'll lose that opportunity and, and there's just no getting it back whether you are still here or you aren't, um, that that family member, or those people are not going to look at you the same. So you you have to weigh that on the scale. Am I willing to to give it all up for the fortune, the fame, the freedom, the accolades, being known as the greatest of all time, or do I want to be the greatest father of all time, the greatest friend of all time, the greatest brother of all time? I think that he came back because he wants to win a Super Bowl. Or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm. He barely last year. He probably say he probably said to himself, "Look, I can't be close, but I'm a, I'm, a, I'm coming back to play again because I want to get to the Super Bowl." And guess what, my man, you might not even make it to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know the way. <laughs> what a waste! And that's, and that's the know? other side of it too. You, you know, know? Yeah. You might, yeah, I'm telling you, it's you were the TV. Probably, probably when you make it to the playoffs, mm -hmm. right? And when you lay down in that casket, whether two years from now or 10 years from now, you're not going to hear the people saying GOAP, right? Hey, mm -hmm. somebody else is going to take that title. Mm -hmm. So I, unless, unless he got ulterior motives in terms of the family and himself, mm -hmm. keep on doing what you're doing. If you know, well, I don't want to be with him, man. I want to, yeah. Okay, if that's how you feel right yeah. keep on playing yeah. but if you know that your family is worshiping you they're with you you like jamal said the goal to them too and guess what they're not coming home after you done play you gone to the bar take a couple of things with your buddies to celebrate i'm here waiting the kids with my time you come to get to sleep i'm asleep you got you gotta you gotta set your priorities man you really do because you know when you get old, guess what those kids are gonna be saying? I ain't going to see me in the nursing home, or I'm not going to stay here. Come to see me, yep. right? Mm -hmm. He come to see me in my games. He one day for my graduation. One day for my marriage. Cause he have to play. You know what I mean? True. Mm -hmm. So you you gotta within your mind say, now oh, wait a minute. Roll the dice. Roll the dice and say my family comes first. I'm gonna tell y'all. I may be 72, 73 in a couple of months, but I'm gonna tell you. My family come first, man. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how old these are, boys and all that stuff. My family come first. And I always tell people that. Because you only got one family. If you're not there for your family, they're not going to be there for you. I guarantee you that. You know, because yeah. I'm telling you, people don't forget. That's very true. Even, yeah. the, even the small kids, they don't forget. Mm -hmm. They're looking around and saying, daddy? And he's not there. When they grow up, you want them to be there for you? Guess what? Don't suck an egg because I'm telling you, they're not going to be there for you. I've seen it so many times. And I said, why do people have to be so selfish the way they live their life? Be there for your family, man. And they're going to be there for you. Trust me. 
100 percent healthy habits mm -hmm. uh it's establishing those healthy habits uh yeah. you have to be very it seems it's a delicate line right from the sounds of the cross because if you don't establish those healthy habits you may end up creating a, a, a nasty cycle that as you said the the upbringing from the offsprings and relative to family they paid attention to it they took note and mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. in some cases some people learn things like that and and they apply that as part of their logic and 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 it's hard to break a a, a ripple effect like that and to cre create stability uh because uh people judgment of what's morally right or wrong becomes blurred and that's kind of what we see in my opinion humble opinion now as a whole it's mm -hmm. generationally uh become that kind of a approach to what we see in society so it's it's very very good to keep in mind to be very wary of what has developed into an addiction of sorts and um be mindful of establishing those healthy habits mm -hmm. so that you can control you know those parts of your life because we we see it all the time so it's really that's really good to kind of that's one of my takeaways from this is to just be mindful of that as I move forward mm -hmm. um humbling through the, our conversation for myself to kind of reflect on a few things it, it, as it's happening like oh I'm guilty of that okay all you right. feel guilty. <laughs> you feel it. You feel, you it. feel guilty. You know? You oh, shit. Yeah, maybe, no. I should have, man, maybe I should have done that. You, you feel, um, look, if you're you and if you got a heart and you got a conscience, you're going to feel guilty. Trust me. Because I've, I've been there a couple of times. I said, oh, God, it. maybe I should have. You know, and then guess what? Tomorrow I'm not going to do what I was doing today because I ain't going to feel guilty. As I pass up the opportunity to spend time with my son or my daughter or my grandkids, mm. that's not gonna happen. Either. You know, so that's how I judge. That's how I roll. Right. Basically, that's how I roll. One hundred percent. And I think yeah. you know, for anybody who's listening, include I mean, including us, honestly, because we we are feverishly taking notes. I, I don't have my notepad here, but it's it's getting lost. Mental notes. Mental notes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, I, I think the one thing that they can take away from this is to yes, listen to your body um understand that there is going to be a tomorrow as long as you keep making progress but um i'm sure there are some folks out there who are asking man if we can narrow this down into maybe a three-step process dj bob the whiz in terms of being able to walk away could you let our audience know three things that helped you to move forth from it because the action itself is hard to take from those of for those who are still going through it it might sound easy to do, like you were able to walk away and go on a cruise and do other things and and put a date to when you want to come back. But some others may not be able to take that action. They might be able to write it down, but they're like, ah, I got to do I got to do a show tonight. Let me come back early. Let me do this. Could you name or could you list three tips that would help anybody who is in the same situation of being so obsessed with what they're doing? Just three tips to be able for them to stop think and walk away i would say listen to your body number one listen to the people around you your family your friends that love you that care about you right that's number two and number three don't be too arrogant to listen to even the person that okay for instance your boss you know don't be don't be cocky to mm. so don't don't think that this person's got a motive because they're trying to you take a vacation, mm. you know, take a two weeks vacation. Don't think they're trying to get rid of you, right? They, they're looking out for your health and welfare. So first I would tell into your body, listen to the people around your friends and your family around you. And number three, to, cap, to, capitalize, to capitalize what I'm saying about the third one, you can't hear all the good things about yourself when you lay them in a casket. You can't hear, oh man, the mom was a nice guy, you know, he took to work every day, and, mm. you know, he, Everybody liked him. He did his work diligently, punctual. You know, you, you're not going to hear that. And guess what? As soon as they put you in the ground, they got somebody else to fill that job that you just walked away from. So my thing is, my thing is, listen to your body, listen to the friends and the people around you. I really care about you. I love you. You know what I mean? And if you got somebody where you work in the store or a friend, even a friend, that say, man, tomorrow, 
you know, you, you come to work Sundays, you're here like seven days a week, then you've gone to another state for, for, a, for a meeting or, you know, you know, you, you need to take a, take a week off. Lindsay boss, Lindsay, listen to the person that's saying, look, you need to take a week or take two weeks off because you're probably not going to be around. I'm not saying this to you personally, but that person is not going to be around long enough because they're not listening to their body. They're not listening to, I, I, it, in a sense, I would say, go back to what I was saying about Tom Brady and other people, a sense of selfishness. You know, because you got other people at home, you got other people that cares about you. And that was the second thing. You got to people that love you. Listen. I mean, yeah, really, listen to what you, you're saying. Because they're seeing you from, they're seeing you with their eyes, right? So they're watching you and they're seeing how you're going about. You're not eating healthy. You're not exercising. You're not getting enough sleep. And all those things leads to stroke, heart attack. Mm -hmm. So listen to your body, listen to your friend, the people around you that care about you. And finally, when you're laying in that casket, you're not gonna hear all the good things that they're supposed to be saying about you, because they're not gonna say it until you're gone and you can't hear it. So, I mean, I would say the underlining word is listen to your body. I mean, if there's nothing else I say, I want people to walk away from this podcast, the Acronauts podcast today, Sunday, with that, listen to your body. If I got to go on the rooftop and, and say that, I will. Listen to your body because mm -hmm. it knows best. It's like Father knows best, your body knows best. Mm -hmm. All right? And I, think, I, I took it for granted. I really did. I, I took the way I was feeling is that I felt like I was Superman. You know what I mean? Yeah, everybody said, I, I had a certain, Jimmy T, you know Jimmy T, right? He said, Bob, I don't know what you're all, man. You're pushing your body. You got to take a rest. I don't know you do it. And that's true because I did it. I blew, I blew him off, mm -hmm. you know. I said, ah, you gone to the other station with those boys, man. You tried to put me out of business. But it was true with what you're saying because it finally registered with me. You know what I mean? That you had to take a break. And look, I got a lot of people, Paul, and a lot of people that I know ask me, man, you shut down the station, when are you coming back? I shall be back next May, God's willing. If I didn't shut it down, I would have been under here. Mm. So I had to take that time to regroup, and I, the station is going to be there next May, and so will I, if I continue on the path that I'm going right now. You know what I mean? Mm. And that was, that, was, I, that was my statement to them. 100% factual. Um, you know, I, I, I think, I think sometimes it is tough for people to listen to their body. I think it's the, it's the same machismo. It's the, it's the feel like you have to be everywhere, do everything. Um, I, I, I completely 100% get that. And I think the advice that you're giving, especially listening to your family, listening to those around you who care and love for you more than anybody yeah. else can, uh, because nobody else is, seeing you more or at least should be seeing you more than that family they know people around you out, yeah. they know your ups and downs they they know your habits and they know you so it's it's vital uh that you listen to them it's vital that you you listen to your body and 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 when you say listen to your body you mean really feel what your body is telling you if your body is saying hey you gotta just take a break today it's okay you come back tomorrow and then your body will be rejuvenated and ready to go. But you, go. you ignore it when you don't listen to it. You run yourself down and your yep. body, that that connection between your body and your mind just snaps. It separates. And then all of a sudden you can't, you're not communicating with yourself. And that's what happens when, you know, when people go too far and, you know, there's a heart attack, there's a stroke, there's all these things that happen is yeah. they, they lose that connection with their body. Right. And, it's, and then by the time you get to that point, it's way too late. Too late. Yep. Yeah, too late. So I, I think what you stated is absolutely correct. And, and as you said, DJ Bob Lewis, listen, listen to your body. And I hope all of our Chromis uh, community out there is listening to this podcast and understanding that you have to listen to your body. Um, DJ Bob Lewis, we thank you once again for joining us on episode 88 of the Chromis podcast. Before we let you go, how can these people find you out here? Well, they can find me on WRNGFM, hotradio.com. 
or email wrngfm power jams at radio that gmail.com and uh, like i said i might be out here but i'll be willing to communicate with them once it is that they communicate with me by way of email and before i go let me say it's always a pleasure appearing on the aquamas podcast and uh fellas don't wait too long uh maybe next year again god's willing i guess i'll be back on here with you all and uh if that's the case i'm looking forward to that Oh, absolutely. In the meantime, between time, uh, if I don't make contact with y'all between now and year's end, y'all enjoy your Thanksgiving. Also enjoy your uh, Christmas and the Christmas holidays. I look forward to being back on the podcast early next year or during the, during the spring or, or summer. 123, God's willing. And, you know. and we we know you know we have to have you on around May for very very special reasons. So we got most, diffi- most yeah. definitely, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> absolutely have to have you on then. And and ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for listening or watching your Chromas podcast. If you're listening, that means that you're listening on Spotify or you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. If you are watching our beautiful smiling faces, that can only mean one thing. It means that you are watching on YouTube. And that means that you may need some help spelling it out in that search bar because let's let's face it, many of you guys have struggled to find out who we are, where we are, what we do. So I'll spell it out again once for you. A-C-H-R-O-M-O-U-S. You know exactly where to find us. We are everywhere you can hear a podcast and see a podcast. If you are on YouTube and you've now spelled that word into that search bar, that means that you found episode 88 of the Acromas podcast on YouTube. I need you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That notification bell helps you to be able to find the latest and greatest episodes of the Acromas podcast. And most of all, we'll see... If you enjoyed an episode such as this one, then you're going to enjoy 87 previous ones and more to come. But we need to know that you appreciate these gems that are just falling out effortlessly week after week. And especially when we have such pleasure, such as today with DJ Bob the Wiz dropping so much knowledge on us and I'm taking it back with me and I'm going back to the chalkboard to get my life in order. (laughs) Jay's doing the same as well. And we hope that you are taking notes too. So please, like our content, subscribe to it, turn on that notification bell, and then share it to someone else that can learn that helps save a life. Like hopefully we've made the message clear today and putting yourself first because each one teach one. And that's what we're all about, self-development and growth. And we hope that we reach you and we keep you here. And when, to do so, we need to know that you're liking that content because I make sure to tell you each and every single week that it's free to do so. Remind Jay is that as well. And we want to help spread that movement as well. So please do so, guys. Listen to your body. Listen to this podcast. Enjoy your Sunday. Go Commanders. Cowboys suck. And until next time, it is your boy, J.H. Gibbons. And I will see. Day. Day.